you all thank you for coming. As you see, there's evidence of the hurricane out there right now. <clears throat> Welcome. This is Josie McDaniel Burkett, who is signing for us for a prayer call on Major General Van McCarty, the National Guard. General? If you would pray with me in your tradition of worship, if I pray in mine. Dear Heavenly Father, as we stand here today, we know that uh, Hurricane Dorian is uh, pressing down on the state of South Carolina and the east coast of the United States, and we know that it is currently over the Bahamas now. And we would just ask that you would be with those who are affected by this storm or who may be in the path of this danger, that you would strengthen them and comfort them uh, through your word and through your actions. And Lord, that we would ask those who are in positions of leadership, may you give them the strength and the wisdom to make decisions that are appropriate to help safeguard the citizens of this great state as we work through this time of, of, of danger. Lord, we ask for your prayers and you ask for your comfort in this day and this day forward. In your name we humbly pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, General. Now, John Quirello, National Weather Service, for the forecast, please. Thank you, Governor. Good evening. There is a potential for Hurricane Dorian to bring significant impacts to parts of South Carolina on Wednesday and Thursday. As of the 5 p.m. advisory from the National Hurricane Center, Dorian was still a catastrophic Category 5 hurricane with winds of over 185 miles an hour over the northwest Bahamas. After nearing the east coast of Florida Monday night into Tuesday, Dorian will lift northward with the latest Hurricane Center forecast still indicating that Dorian will pass just off the South Carolina coast late Wednesday and Thursday, weaker than it currently is, but still is a powerful hurricane. There is an increasing potential for strong winds and dangerous storm surge along the South Carolina coast. In addition, there is a flash flood threat, mainly near the coast, where rainfall amounts of 6 to 10 inches or more are possible. It can't be stressed enough that the track could change, and any shift to the left would bring the core of Darien a Dorian near the coast, along with more significant impacts. Thank you. Thank you, John. <clears throat> well, as we get started, we are have some important announcements to make, and uh, would, this is a very serious hurricane. 185 miles an hour with gusts up to 220 miles an hour. That's the the strongest, the largest in in modern history. Certainly, the, the strongest any of us around today have seen. And with these announcements, we know that we cannot make everybody happy, but we uh, believe that we can keep everyone alive. And that's why we're taking the steps that I'm getting ready to announce that we believe will protect the lives and property of people in South Carolina. Tropical force winds from Hurricane Dorian are expected to arrive in South Carolina by 8 o'clock a.m., 8 o'clock in the morning, this Wednesday morning. Based on the latest forecast and storm track, which we have been following very carefully, and after extensive consultation with local county emergency management officials and those you see here today, I'm issuing a mandatory evacuation starting at noon, starting at noon on Monday, September 2nd. Starting at noon on Monday, September the 2nd for the following evacuation zones in the following counties. And if you have your evacuation manual, your storm manual, hurricane guide, and you can see it on the screen there, but it is in this book which is distributed widely around the state. I will read it out and you can see the colors. Those that are colored are all these zones that must be evacuated starting at noon tomorrow, Monday, September the 2nd. They are Jasper County, we're starting at the south and going up. Zone A, which is red, in Beaufort, it's all of Beaufort County. And again, anything you see colored is an evacuation zone that we're being, that we're activating. Beaufort, it's all of Beaufort County. Colleton County, Zone A, which is red, Zone B, which is yellow. Charleston County, it's all of Charleston County. Berkeley County, it's zone B, which is shown in yellow, and zone G, which is shown in pink. In Dorchester County, it is zone D, which is in blue. In Georgetown County, it is zone A, which is in red. And in Horry County, it is in it's zone A, which is also in red. 
Now, of course, the hurricane will be moving up the coast, and some may say, well, why issue the evacuation order all at the same time for the whole coast? And that is because there's only a few hours of difference, that will, that marginal differences, that, uh, that therefore the, the one time is the right time to issue. Point number two, schools and government offices. I'm issuing a second executive order closing all schools and state government offices in the following counties. This is starting Tuesday a.m., September the 3rd. This is for the entire day on Tuesday, not tomorrow, Monday. School's not in on Labor Day. But starting Tuesday morning, all day, September the 3rd, for the entire day. They are in these counties for schools and state government offices, Jasper, Beaufort, Colleton, Charleston, Berkeley, Dorchester, Georgetown, and Ori. And again, that starts Tuesday, September 3rd, and they will remain closed how long? Until further notice. <clears throat> for the Midlands, for the Midlands, where many schools are used as shelters, any decisions on school and state government Office closings there will be made when and will be announced and made when and if necessary. Number three, lane reversals. Lane reversals, evacuation lane reversals will begin in Beaufort County on U.S. Highway 278, which leaves Hilton Head Island starting at noon again. Noon Monday, September the 2nd. That's tomorrow, noon. Tolls on the Cross Island Parkway will be suspended beginning at noon on Monday, September the 2nd. As for I-26, tomorrow is Labor Day, Monday, September the 2nd. This is usually a heavy traffic day with tourists leaving the coast from the Charleston area. When you add to this traffic, the residents evacuating pursuant to uh, this hurricane, that will create a recipe for gridlock or worse. We do not want people to be stuck on the highway. Typically, the gridlock would occur between where I-26 heading from Charleston to Columbia intersects with I-95. From there on, we typically have very slow traffic and non-moving traffic on normal days. We expect it to be much worse tomorrow with this evacuation. For that reason, lane reversal for I-26 west from Charleston to Columbia will begin at noon on Monday, September 2nd. That is noon, Monday, September 2nd. That is when it will be closed so the traffic leaving from the Charleston area can move all the way up uh, unimpeded on both, both sides of the road. Secretary Hall and Director Smith will provide additional data, details about that. <clears throat> any decisions, if any, about other lane reversals in the Grand Strand, the PD, or anywhere else will be made and announced as needed and the public will be alerted in plenty of time. Finally, number three, medical evacuations. I've also issued an executive order, the third one, requiring medical facilities like nursing homes, assisted living facilities, and hospitals to immediately begin the transport of their residents and patients from the areas that we have ordered to be evacuated. At this time, I call on General McCarty. Thank you, Governor. Uh, the soldiers and airmen of the South Carolina National Guard, in addition to our State Guard, are in position now to support uh, the Department of Public Safety, Department of Transportation, and SLED in an orderly and safe evacuation of the affected area as described by the Governor. In addition, we're also uh, partnering with our other state uh, entities and federal entities to ensure that we are prepared to uh, execute any follow-on missions by identifying resources that may be necessary at that point, either from the state or federal level, to have them positioned and ready to be deployed as necessary. Uh, we will continue to monitor the situation and we would again encourage, as we do our soldiers and airmen, to make the necessary pre preparations yourself for this storm so that uh, we can get through it as, as, as mentally, uh, as mentally um, impacted as we possibly can. So, thank you. Thank you, General Secretary. Christy Hall, Department of Transportation. Thank you, Governor. <clears throat> DOT has well north of 2,200 employees uh, tasked with uh, 
planning and responding to this hurricane. We've been very busy over the last several days moving our assets down to the affected areas and in preparation for the possible reversals or the reversals as we have them planned now. We have been very actively monitoring traffic flows in the state as well as through the state, coordinating with our partners in uh, Florida and Georgia so that we understand what their traffic flows are, are as well. We've been working very closely with the Department of Public Safety uh, for the last several days on deploying additional resources already to the I-26 and I-95 corridors to help keep traffic moving in advance of the evacuation uh, here in the state and that's worked very well for us so far. As the governor mentioned, we already are aware that I-26 uh, typically becomes congested during the Labor Day holiday and so uh, it's very prudent that we implement the reversal as he has ordered on I-26 to make sure that we are able to effectively move traffic from the Charleston region up through the Midlands of the state to get our folks uh, and our visitors to safety. Um, we continue to work very closely with DPS on that plan and other plans as needed and we will adapt as required in order to keep things moving. Thank you. Thank you very much. Director Smith, Department of Public Safety. Thank you, Governor. Uh, as I stated earlier, the Department of Public Safety has 2,785 law enforcement and National Guard personnel assigned to the emergency su support function, 16 for evacuations. Uh, our evacuations will include staffing local regional evacuation routes as well as lane reversal operations. We will either staff or monitor over 700 traffic control uh, points within the three regions. Uh, also would like to talk about um, uh, the uh, lane reversal routes. There are two that we are focusing in on right now. The first will be uh, in the largest I-26 uh, corridor from the uh, Charleston area to uh, Columbia. Uh, and the, uh, the second lane reversal will be U.S. 278 uh, in the uh, Hilton Head uh, area. So with respect to uh, the lane reversal, uh, we're going to have, as uh, the governor mentioned too, we're really going to have a large scale uh, type of evacuation. And we want to maximize the use of all lanes. We have them there, we want to maximize the use of all lanes. So we are using, as you heard earlier, a concept called lane reversals. Uh, that means that all travel lanes on I-26 from Charleston to Columbia will proceed in the same direction, headed away from the uh, threatened area. Uh, this is a way to handle anticipated, uh, additional anticipated traffic as people leave the coastal uh, area. In short, our operation will move as many people or evacuees away from the threatened area as quickly but safely as possible. So how do we implement a lane reversal? Uh, we have an ingress, that's the beginning, and we have uh, uh, an egress, that's the ending. Uh, the beginning part is where we would load the actual vehicles on the reverted side. Uh, so how do we clear the eastbound lanes of I-26 to get the vehicles on the reverted side. We use a technique we call flush. We will flush the uh, eastbound lanes of I-26. The flushing procedure will start in Columbia, although we will load the, uh, the I-26 reverted route in Charleston, we would flush it from the Columbia area. So the troopers, once they get in position on I-26 in the Columbia area at the interchange of I-77, uh, if the vehicles are in front of the uh, trooper, trooper vehicles, they get a free ride to, to Charleston. However, if the troopers are, if the vehicles are behind uh, the trooper vehicle, those vehicles, once we start the uh, flushing phase, those vehicles would be uh, detoured off at either US 321 or I-77 North. Now, once we give the order to, to deploy assets, that means probably right around 5 a.m., this, this morning, tomorrow morning, about 5 a.m., once we give the order to deploy assets, again, if you're on I-26 eastbound, you're fine. But once we deploy those assets, those assets no more vehicles can get onto uh, I-26 eastbound because we will be starting the, uh, the flushing process. So how do we push those vehicles uh, south or east, if you will, once we start flushing? Once the trooper vehicle passes an intersection, uh, exit ramp, 
uh, we will deny access to that entrance ramp for that intersection in question. And we'll just kind of walk it down. Once we pass the next intersection, we will secure the uh, ent entrance ramp to that particular uh, uh, to the interstate. And we'll just continue this flushing process until we get to the uh, Charleston area at the uh, I-526 uh, interchange. Once the uh, vehicles, uh, flush vehicles have cleared the uh, I-26 eastbound side, working with our partners, whether it's uh, DNR, Civil Air Patrol, SLED, uh, we would do flowers to make sure that the, uh, the reverted side is clear. Uh, once we've ascertained that the reverted side is clear, uh, the first vehicles onto the reverted side will be uh, the uh, Highway Patrol vehicles. And uh, they'll get onto the reverted side and they'll bring the vehicles back up to the uh, Columbia area. So how do we load that, uh, the reverted side from the I-26 uh, interchange? There are crossovers there where we built, where DOT built, where we can get vehicles onto the reverted side. Also, College Park Road, Ashley Phosphate, and US-71, we could load the reverted side uh, from those areas as well. Once the vehicles get onto uh, the reverted side, if they get off, uh, they're going to have to return to the normal westbound lanes of I-26. Now, uh, once they're on uh, the reverted side, there are eight exits that they could get off for gas, whatever. Uh, but once they're off of the reverted side, they have to return on the, uh, uh, the regular westbound lanes. We want to give priority to the folks coming from the, the coastal region and have them a clear shot to uh, Columbia. If you're on the regular westbound side of uh, I-26, there will be 14 exits that you will have an opportunity to get off of gas, uh, restaurant, etc. cetera. Uh, so once we got the lane reversal set up, we got the vehicles going in the uh, opposite direct, well, on the opposite side of the roadway, how do we bring those vehicles back to the regular side, the westbound sides of uh, I-26? Well, here in the Columbia area, at the I-77 interchange, we have a crossover. And uh, if you're traveling on the westbound lanes of I-26, you would be forced off to I-77 northbound. The vehicles who are on the reverted side, once they pass that intersection, there will be a crossover. And we'll bring those vehicles back to the uh, westbound lanes of I-77. Again, there are three lanes traveling uh, westbound and eastbound in that area, and they will cross over into three lanes. So you won't have an interruption due to uh, a lane mergers. Three <coughs> lanes uh, cross over in two, cross over in two three lanes, so a smooth uh, transition. What type of emergency services do we have along the uh, lane reversal route? Uh, will we have uh, EMS, fire, they will be uh, strategically placed along the route. We will have the uh, South, South Carolina National Guard record teams to clear the uh, roadway in the event that we have collisions. We will have aircraft again monitoring to give us that uh, surveillance from the sky. We'll have uh, DOT SHEP, the uh, State Highway uh, Emergency Program, uh, to provide some type of uh, roadside services. We'll have uh, our troopers on line patrol in the event that something uh, were to occur. Uh, uh, last year, I think we worked, uh, investigated uh, two minor collisions uh, on the uh, uh, reverted side. So it was a very uh, successful uh, uh, operation. And last but not least, I would just like to offer some evacuation tips for our evacuees. Uh, the first would be know your evacuation route. Uh, you can go to uh, the uh, scmd.org website or the scdot.org website and ascertain your, uh, your designated evacuation route. Uh, second uh, tip, be patient. Some of the evacu evacuation routes may be at maximum capacity and it could take you longer to get to your destination. And the third, but not least, be prepared. Ensure that your vehicle is properly serviced with a full tank of gas, have an emergency kit that includes snacks, food, water, care items for kids, medications, toiletries, extra cash, flashlight, and a cell phone. Thank you, Governor. Thank you very much. Rick Timmy, Director of Department of Health and Environmental Control. Thank you, yes, Governor. Sir. Yes, sir. As the governor stated, a mandatory medical emergency evacuation has been issued for all hospitals and nursing homes in the evacuation zone. 
This includes approximately 200 facilities that could be potentially impacted. Our EMS staff are working with these facilities to ensure the safe evacuation of the patients and residents. Governor, thank you. Thank you, sir. Kim Stinson, Director of Emergency Management Division. Kim. Thank you, sir. Um, we'd already mentioned earlier that the SEAC is fully operational here in, in Pine Ridge. Our current priorities are evacuation and sheltering, and then follow-on priorities are response and damage assessment, and that will be later in the week. Uh, we stay in uh, fairly uh, close contact with the counties. Uh, we have at least twice daily conference calls with them to determine any unmet needs or issues that they have at their level. Their primary focus also is evacuation and sheltering. Uh, and we are also, uh, today we deployed our uh, South Carolina Emergency Management Division liaisons uh, to the coastal counties to assist with uh, operations here over the next several days. We've activated our logistics contracts uh, from, for commodities, general logistical support and uh, transportation. And if need be, we'll coordinate any out-of-state out assets uh, through the Emergency Management Assistance Compact, and we've used that heavily uh, in the last several years. And then uh, also in that area, the Winsboro Warehouse uh, is well stocked. It's got over 500 pallets of meals, 750 pallets of uh, water, over 150,000 sandbags, and almost 10,000 tarps for uh, temporary roof repair. Our uh, FEMA Federal Coordinating Officer and a small advanced team are already on the ground here in South Carolina to uh, uh, help us with anything that we need here again in the next several days. Uh, the governor's requested a uh, uh, federal emergency declaration, uh, which will allow us assistance from the uh, federal government uh, under direct federal assistance, anything from transportation to incident management teams, as well as potential financial support for debris management and emergency protective measures. Uh, also, I mentioned earlier uh, about everybody being their own personal emergency manager and having a plan. I already mentioned that we've got our website, SCEMD.org. The governor's also mentioned our hurricane guide which is available there as well, and also in paper copies. Uh, and then we also have the South Carolina Emergency Mobile app, Emergency Management Mobile app that's available uh, that has all that information on it as well. Um, in terms of the uh, population that's uh, going to uh, conduct the evacuation, uh, we've got a Know Your Zone uh, section on both uh, our website and our mobile emergency manager that allows you to type in your address, and then it'll tell you if you're in a zone, and if so, what zone you're in. So it's, it's a handy tool that is both uh, scmd.org and our mobile emergency manager app. We also have the, uh, tomorrow we'll uh, start operating the public information phone system, and that's at 1-866-246-0133, and we'll have operators 24 hours a day answer any evacuation or sheltering issues or anything else that you might have a problem with, and they can help you uh, find the right answer. Also mention also the sheltering piece is uh, the shelters will be open once the evacuation begins uh, and that lo those locations are available with a full list and that's updated live also on our website at scemd.org um, and also at the South Carolina Emergency Manager mobile app. If you go to a shelter uh, you'll need blankets, pillows, and comfort items. Uh, medicines, if you uh, have any uh, medications that you need to have. Uh, certainly identification papers are always helpful. And then if you have any special food items for, for anybody, uh, especially children, then you should bring those as well. Uh, pets, service animals are allowed in the shelters, but there are some shelters that do accept pets. Uh, that information will be noted on the website and on our emergency manager app. Uh, and if you do show up uh, with a pet at a shelter, then the uh, people at the shelter will assist you in trying to uh, determine what the best uh, plan is for your needs. And then again, mention our hotline at 1-866-246-0133. And that also uh, we have Spanish interpreters available as well. Sir, uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Yes, Governor, please. I was wondering uh, how many people are expected to be included in this evacuation order? Uh, we're estimating right now about 830,000 uh, are in those evacuation zones that the governor briefed. Uh, I guess another question for you, sir. What time will the shelters open? They'll open in conjunction with the evacuation. So they'll be open uh, tomorrow at noon. 
More questions? Um, people who are concerned about where their loved ones will go who are being transported from the medical facilities, do we know any more information about that? Yes. Dr. Tooney? The hospitals, as they, hospitals and nursing homes and other facilities will communicate with the family members as to the destination where those patients and residents will be evacuated. Uh, all, most of the, all of the facilities have uh, reciprocal agreements and we can't say which ones will go where now, but as they are transported, loved ones will, family members will be informed where their uh, loved ones will be destined. And, and what about gas? Have we been monitoring the gas for people who are having to leave? Will they have those resources available? Right. Uh, we've got uh, close contact with the Office of Regulatory Staff has very close contact with the uh, various gas providers uh, to make sure that that's all working. They'll go ahead and uh, uh, fill up gas tanks along the evacuation routes. Uh, so they should be all topped off. And so we've got a separate plan that uh, ORS helps with to make sure that uh, there's enough gas out there for everybody. We don't see any problems with gas so far. Okay. Any more questions? Thank you very much.